When I was a little kid, this used to be one of my favorite board games. It's called the Game of Life. They probably still sell it. Let's take a look at a little bit at the parts and the pieces. Each player got uh, his or her own little car, and then uh, they started you off with a peg that represented you, and then when you got married, they added another little peg to your car, and then each time you had a kid, they put another little peg in the car to represent the kid. There were also a board, that typical, and then uh, there were some cards that went along with the game, and then this fancy spinner. Most board games back then had dice, but one of the cool things about this game is it had a spinner, and you could spin the spinner, and this little thing used to make noise here on the side. And uh, then as you went along on the board, there were these little buildings and little markings on the board showing you uh, where you were going to go, how much money you were going to make, what other things were going to happen in your life like that. This is a very typical board game. So I want to ask you a few questions about this board game now. How come every single person gets their own separate car? And how come each car has a different color? What would happen if all the cars had the same color? More importantly, how come there's only one spinner? Why doesn't every player get his or her own spinner? You're probably thinking right now that the answers to these questions are too easy, rather trivial. You know, it's interesting, whenever I teach computer programming to uh, AP students, I find that the, the topic of static tends to be one of the biggest challenges, uh, even for a, a high-end AP CSA student. And uh, part of the reason is they don't really understand what it means to be static, whether as a variable or as a method. So I'm hoping that by showing you this analogy with the board game, it starts to get you thinking about when you design something uh, that represents what's going on in the real world, some model for it, which things need to be duplicated or individualized, and which things can be shared across the board. And in this case, shared across the board, I mean that literally with the spinner. So I think you've probably realized by now that the reason that the spinner, you only need one of them, is that can easily be shared among all the people. And since each person uh, is never spinning when someone else is spinning, there's no reason to customize the spinner uh, for each person. Likewise, if we had the same color cars, uh, obviously there would be confusion about who owns what. And we certainly can't share a car uh, among multiple players. Okay? These are going to be important concepts to consider when we talk about the programming counterpart in Java and which variables need to be owned by each object and which variables can be shared for an entire class. Let's switch to Java now and talk about a simple class. I'm going to call this class dog and it's going to represent a dog in the real world and it's going to be uh, only track one a single item right now which is the name of the dog. I've gone ahead now and created a getter and a setter method for the name and here inside the test class which I've lazily put into the same class as the dog I've created two dogs one called Fido and I've set Fido's name to Fido, and I've created another dog called Rover and set Rover's name to Rover. And here I've printed the information about the two dogs. So let's now run the program and see, uh, see what happens. Okay, so here I've printed the information about the two dogs, and we see that there's no problem in keeping the names separate on Fido and Rover. And if I was going to take this uh, program and draw the analogy to what was happening with my game board, I would say that uh, each of the objects uh, has its own name in much the same way that here in the game board each uh, player uh, has its own car. Now we get to the interesting problem inside the dog class. What we want to do in the dog class is we want to assign each dog uh, a unique license number. So every time we create a dog we want to basically give it a different number than all the other dogs that we've created so far. Now one easy way to do this, right here in the main method, uh, we could just create a license variable. I'll just call it, uh, let's see, I'll call it um, int license number, and I could set that equal to zero. And uh, here I could increment the license number, and then when I create the dog, I could pass the license number to the dog in the constructor like this. And of course, I'd have to add the license number variable over here. Uh, 
So what I've done here is when I create the dog, uh, I pass the license number in the constructor for the dog. Now what's wrong with this? Well, there, this is a pretty bad design uh, strategy here because what I've done is I've made the user responsible now. The user of the dog class must now keep track of the license numbers, create the license numbers, increment them, and each time uh, the user creates another dog, uh, they have to pass the license number. What I really want is the dog class to maintain its own license number. Why is that? Well, in an object-oriented design, the classes are self-aware and they maintain themselves. That's an important property. Okay, uh, I don't want uh, a user of the of the class to have to do all this extra work. The dog class uh, should be able to maintain its own licenses. So this is not the way we want to implement the license numbers. I think you will agree if there were multiple users of the dog class, uh, they would have to then coordinate the license numbers and it could rapidly get out of hand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out all this license number stuff from the main method. So I've deleted all the license number stuff from the test code and now the code looks like it did before we inserted the license information. So what we need to do in the constructor of the dog somehow is to uh, create and maintain the, the license numbers. So let's try and do that. Let's, um, let's initialize the license number for the dog here right in this class. So I'll just, um, maybe I'll just increment the license number right here. Uh, and then um, uh, let's see, how would I do this? Well, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, I'm going to just increment the license number and uh, run the application and see what happens. So I'm going to compile this and let's run it now. Okay, uh, we have a little problem. Both dogs have the same license number. Let's see what happened here. All right, so I created uh, the first dog here, Fido, and Fido has its license variable here. I incremented the license number, so it went from zero to one. And then when I created Rover, uh, Rover got its own license number of zero once again and then when I created Rover in the constructor for Rover it, it incremented its license number and once again it set it to one. So I think you see the problem here. Uh, we need to have somehow uh, the two dogs that we've created and if there are any more have those dogs uh, somehow share in the license numbering information. Uh, if they each get their own uh, license number from the very beginning uh, there's no way to tell how many dogs have been created and who should get what license number. We, we could assign the license numbers randomly, but then there would be a chance that two dogs might end up with the same license. So the way we solve this is that we're going to use a static variable here. So he, now what's happening is that this license number uh, variable is now, instead of being owned by the individual dogs Rover and Fido, uh, there's only one license variable for the entire class of dogs, okay? And even though uh, static variables are automatically set to zero, I'm going to just explicitly set it to zero here in the static area. Going back to our board game analogy, I'm hoping you can see that the code that we wrote for the licensing of the dogs is a shared resource in much the same way that the spinner was the shared resource in the board game. Okay, all the players took their turns spinning the same spinner. Likewise, in the dog class, we have one licensing variable that's shared among all the dogs, and whenever each dog needs it, it can increment the variable. So now that we have the static variable, which is the general licensing number for the dog, uh, we still need to create a, a separate variable to keep the track of uh, the license numbers for each individual dog. Okay, so this one keeps track of the license numbers for the entire class of dogs, and uh, each time a new dog is created now, we increment the general license number, which is the static variable, and we assign that license number uh, to this particular dog. So let's uh, compile and run this and see if we can get unique license numbers now for both Rover and Fido. I'm going to run this now. And we see, indeed, we've managed to uh, get the desired effect. So Fido has a license number of one. Rover has a license number of two. And if I added additional dogs here uh, in the constructor, 
uh, they would be assigned unique license numbers as well. To summarize, when we create instance variables in a class, for example in our dog class, we have name and my license as instance variables. Uh, these are kept uh, separately for each dog that we create. When we create a static variable like this, that static variable is shared uh, by all the members of the class. Sometimes it's advantageous to use a static variable to coordinate information for the entire class among all of its members. Okay, Going back to our video game analogy, if we look at the board and the a spinner and the individual cars, these would be examples of instance variables and this would be an example of a static variable or a static object.